Hello, everybody, and welcome to Chin Fat. In this episode, I am continuing going over the toolbar. And in this specific episode, I'm going to be covering the pen tool. And the easy way to select that, if you're already on your selection tool, is to hit the letter P on your keyboard, and that selects your pen tool. Or you can just go over and click on it. Either way works. The pen tool is useful in a couple different ways. And one way that I probably use it the most is going to be keyframing. So keyframing is where you change a clip's attribute, either the video or the audio over time. And I should specify that that is for doing keyframing specifically on the timeline, not in the effect controls panel. If we go down here and we look at this clip right here, I'm gonna zoom up, do it a little bit. First of all, you do need to have your track at kind of a standard track height, which will help it show your keyframe line. You got a keyframe line for your video here and you got a keyframe line for your audio here. And if you can't see those for some reason, there's a couple things you have to do to bring up your keyframe lines. If you have a very small track height, like if I hit shift minus, it's going to make this so small that it cannot, you cannot access the keyframe lines there. So I'm going to hit shift plus and bring it up to a standard track height. So if you have a squish, track height like that, just simply hit shift plus and it will bring it up to a standard track height. And another issue that might be taking away the keyframes will be here under the wrench setting. If you go to the wrench setting for the timeline, you need to make sure that the show video keyframes are checkmarked and the audio keyframes are checkmarked. If these are unchecked, you will not have access to the keyframe lines there. So I am going to checkmark the video keyframes and checkmark the audio keyframes. And now I'm set and it's showing all the keyframes on both video and audio. So let's demonstrate audio first. And this is probably a little bit better demonstrated if we put one clip on top of another, one track on top of another here. If I grab this clip here and just drag it up on top, let's say we want this one here. And this one I have a fade in and a fade out. And right now this track is on top. So it is the video that is showing. Beneath that video, if I turn this eyeball off, it'll show uh, the track that is below that right now. So this is now invisible. So let's turn that back on. And this is what they would call the, the opacity keyframe line right here on video specifically. So if I hit P for my pen tool, it's selected, move over to my timeline here, and we click on this line here, what it will do is it will add keyframes. And keyframes, what that's gonna do is it's going to turn down the opacity of the clip, make it more transparent or less transparent over time. We can just simply grab this with the regular selection tool, hit the letter V, this hit the letter V and hit my selection tool, and we can grab this opacity line and it turns it down. And right now it will be around 48% opacity, which is fairly transparent. So now you can see as we play through this that the video is turned down and we're seeing through it to the video track below it. So it's ghosting there. If we grab this and drag it down even more, down to like 20%, you're going to see to the video below because now this is, so this track is becoming more and more transparent the more we turn this down. If we turn it down all the way, then you can see completely through it and all you can see is the video track below it. So let's undo that. But now if you want that to change over time, let's say we want this to kind of fade in a little bit like a dreamy thing and then fade back out. We're going to put the whole track around like 60% opacity, maybe a little bit more, maybe around like 40%, 38%. So we can see the track below it. I'm going to get rid of my fade in and fade out on the ends of these clips here. And I'm going to extend my clip a little bit longer. So let's say I'm going to turn that off for a second. Let's say as we are going from this video here to this next video, I want this to, that kind of overlay to fade in a little bit. So we're going to do this over time. I'm going to hit plus to zoom up a little bit. And I'm going to hit P for my pen tool. And now I'm going to add a keyframe here. This is where I want it to turn it up to that 38% that we selected. And now I'm going to click right here. And this is where it's going to start. I'm going to grab this and drag it down to zero. I'm going to go to the end of this clip, go click, and click again, and then drag this down to zero. And now it's going to fade into 38%. It'll go from zero to 38%, and then hit this keyframe and go from 38% down to 0%. So let me turn this track back on, and we're going to watch that effect now. So watch this as it fades in. I'm actually going to grab these keyframes and grab the first one, hold down shift and grab the second one. And I can push both these keyframes over and I want it to start right there. So this video plays for a second. Now watch this. And then that video fades in. And then at the end here, it fades out. And goes back to the regular video. So I could grab both of these here, hold down shift, grab both those keyframes, drag them over to the left. And I, then I can mess around with the timing on these things. I can grab just a single keyframe. I'm going to start moving this over. I'm going to hold down shift and shift will lock it to its 38%. Otherwise you can, if I'm not holding shift, like right now, it'll, it, you can push it up or down, but if you hold down shift, it'll keep it at the 38%, make a long gradual fade in, and then grab this one over here and do a long gradual fade out. I'm holding down shift to get it to stay at 30%. You do have to grab it first, start moving it, and then hold down shift. If you do shift beforehand, it won't do it at all. It won't even grab it. So I'm going to move that over. And now I've got these nice long fade in and fade out. So it looks kind of dreamy. So watch this as we play through. It's long, gradual, opacity fade in. 
and then a long gradual opacity fade out. There we go. And that's how that works on the video clip. So now if we use the pen tool for audio here, it's pretty much the same, but it's for audio levels and it works pretty much the same way as it does with the video. So here I just have some ambient noise from the clip that plays back. Just ambient noise from the location. But let's say we want to turn that up and down. This might work there better for like dialogue or something like that. But if you want to turn something up and down, what you can do is you can select your pen tool, hit P for pen tool. And now I can do the same thing. Say we want this audio to kind of gradually fade in and then maybe turn down a little bit, then turn back up for some reason. You can click keyframes on here. Let's put one right there and one at the beginning. And I'm going to grab this and drag it down to, to negative 999 dB, which is completely turned down. So what this is going to do is it's going to go from turned down to turned up. And then if you want to increase the volume on something else, you can put a pivot point here, turn it up, turn it back down, and you will see that this changes in volume as it goes through these keyframes. It will gradually turn up, then turn up again, and then turn down. Let's listen to this. Then it gets louder. Then it gets quieter. This is really helpful, especially if you're editing dialogue. And here's an instance in dialogue where you might find yourself using the pen tool. Uh, right here where this guy speaks on dialogue, he says... No, you got to use soy sauce. No, you got to use soy sauce. So when he says no, you'll notice no. the level is above negative 12, where, right about where it should be. And then when he says you got to use soy sauce, you got to use soy sauce. it's around negative 21 to negative 18. So this needs to be pushed up to be normalized. It needs to be around negative 12. So what we can do is select the pen tool. And right here, this is at a good level already. So I'm just going to put a selection. I'm going to put a keyframe. I'm going to put a keyframe right here. And I'm going to put a keyframe right before he speaks again. And I'm going to grab this. And I'm going to turn this up by about six decibels and see if the level is more where we need it. So let's play through it. No, you got to use soy sauce. And now his other, now both of his audio clips are around negative 12 where it needs to be. Where That's a normalized level for audio. And that's a good essence of using uh, the pen tool to keyframe audio. The other option is under workspaces. If you go under captions and graphics here, this layout, uh, the pen tool is used to create graphics. I've showed this in a previous episode. If you want to find that, it's just a few episodes back. You're welcome to go look at it. But the pen tool is used to create shapes. If, if you move your pen tool up over your program monitor, it suddenly becomes a shape creator. You can click, 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 and it will draw a shape. Then you can close that. Now I can close the circuit, go down here and click, and it closes the circuit. Now I've got this complete shape by just by clicking and, and adding these nodes here. And it creates this graphic down here that was created with a pen tool. I can select this. I'm going to hit B for selection, select this graphic and delete it. And I'll show you another thing that it does here. If you use the pen tool, that shape that I showed before was a hard corner shape. And now you can click and drag and that makes a Bezier curve here. So now if I click and drag again, this is, notice this is making a curve shape instead of a hard edge shape. If you simply click like this, it will make hard edge shapes. But if you click and drag, it will make a curved rather than a hard edge there. So and that's the other use of the pen tool here. You can also use to create shapes. You can use the rectangle tool, ellipse tool, and polygon tool. I've shown that in the previous episode. But that's pretty much it for the main uses of the pen tool inside of the toolbar. Well, thanks for watching ChinFat. In the next couple episodes, I'm going to be going over the hand tool and the zoom tool. And that will conclude the series on the toolbar.